Hello baby gangsters, this is Calvin, also known as Omar, and this is The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. This is my first ever playthrough of The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. We're continuing on exactly from where we left off last time. It's been a long time for some of you. If you're binge watching this and it's already over, this has literally been a smooth return for you. This went from episode like whatever to episode whatever. I don't even know, but hey, <laughs> we're here playing this game. Um, surprisingly enough, I was like, oh, I'm so worried. I'm not going to be able to remember some of the stuff. It's been months. It's been multiple playthroughs since I've played this. Um, to, to give a quick idea for people of why I didn't play on, it was because at the time uh, I had a few different reasons. I felt like, you know, it was not engaging me as much. But I have had a craving to come back to this game because while I did have a few critiques of the game, I do think that this game, like I said, the art style is amazing, the music is amazing, the characters are great. And I want to see how the story finishes as well. So here we are. With juror number two. I don't remember all the voices I've done, but I do actually kind of... I remember the story. I remember what's happening. Uh, it's a good story. Contradict. Con. C-O-N. Juror number six. You've got the wrong end of the stick. I do not have stick. I have a mouse. As juror number two said earlier. When the Skulkin Brothers... Oh, the Skulkin Brothers fled the scene of the night in question. They fired a shot from the revolver. Yes. They shot poor Mr. Sholmes in the, ab in the abdomen, I understand. Surely you're not going to tell the court now that you didn't hear. Abdomen. Abdo. A-B-D. Sir? Sorry, sorry. My English is still learning. You were telling the court you didn't hear? Forgive me. I did not hear. Ah, here's the word. Abdomen. Part of the person's body containing the stomach and other vital, vital organs. Is this what you mean? You should say it in plain English. I'm Russian. I'm not a native speaker. Who thought it was a good idea to let this man be on the jury again? Have you seen the juries in this game? Have you seen them? None of them have been a good idea. So, you are telling me these brothers who look like criminals were lying. <laughs> They said before, we've never done nothing. But the truth is, they shot Detective. Ah, this is a double negative. Y yes, that's exactly right. Lying? Okay, calm down, calm down, calm down. Lying is wrong, especially when lie is said by a person who looks like criminal. Coming from you, that seems surprisingly prejudiced. What do you mean? He doesn't look like a criminal, he just has a hat and a beard. Oh, because he was a criminal in the newspaper? <laughs> no, that was the lady, wasn't it? That was, uh... Maybe, I don't know. This means... When they said, we never took nothing, maybe it was also a big fat lie. Is this true? Well, according to the police report, no stolen goods were found, so... Enough! I trust no one now. It's not the mouse's fault, though, sir, I agree. I must see without eyes. I must invest in investigate crime scene myself. I'm afraid that won't be possible. Yes, it is, Bruno. Oh, there she uh, Yeah, hey. Uh, sorry. Uh, with the prints from Hurley's red uh, handed record. Oh, yeah, we have pictures, don't we? We have. This was the crime scene, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Magnifying Glash. Oh. This is actually a really good game. And, like, we can look at the people as well. We have Suzato, amazing character. Herlock Sholmes, great. Iris 10. Pop, Windy Bank, loved him. Gina, the greatest character who ever lived. Eggert, who I hate. Uh, Tobias Gregson, eh? Uh, Mil uh, Miles Strongheart. Barak Von Zeeks. Nash Nash What was his voice? I don't remember. Nash Skokin. Wingo Skokin. That's their voices now, I suppose. Ah. If you compare the print that the pictures, uh, that pictures Ginny and the next print from the half an hour later, you'd be able to see straight away if anything was taken or not. Oh, that's so smart, Iris. You're so smart. Cool, you missed the prose uh, prosecutor. Calling on the prosecution in the middle of a summation. Examination of all times. The print showing the accused threatening the victim after she broke into the shop is this one. Following this, the victim and the accused moved into the storeroom. Meanwhile, the Skulkin brothers entered the shop and summar summarily heard the fatal gunshot ring out. 
Sadly, none of these events were captured on film. This is the print produced by the camera half an hour later, after the brothers' flight. So this was taken after Hurley was shot then. As far as I can tell, nothing has been taken. Wait, can I? Is it? Add it to the call record. Let me check this out. That doesn't seem to be the case. I can't notice anything that's obviously missing in the second print. Add it to the court record. Let me see. So the brothers who look like criminals told only one lie. They shot man, but they stole nothing. It would seem so, yes. Good. No, not good. You're right. I do not understand the situation. Now I know brothers have lied. I think it is very important to continue the trial. Oh, great. Thank you. Yay! Well done, Runo. The balance is shifting. Well, it's a start, I suppose. But there must be more on what these jurors are saying. That I can expose the, to the truth. To expose the truth. And if I can do that, we might uh, just turn into a situation in our favor still. Thank you, counsel. Continue with the summation of examination. And kindly hand the new photographic print to the bailiff to be filed as evidence. Thank God. Thank the Lord, I say. Let me check the court record then. Thank you. Yeah, I wonder if you make use of that. I'm gonna check it out right away. So we have this one is this one. I cannot see a lick of a difference here. Like Okay, so let's see what's here. Let's talk about what's here. The cap print is here. We don't need the magnifying glass. That's all here as well, yeah? Is anything different to you guys? There's two ca wait, the candelabra's there? Is it two is there two notes there? The book there. The ink quill. Is it all there? Yeah, they're all there. No, I think I'm seeing things. I thought that the the, the green books at the back were pushed out. Wait, are they are they pushed out further? They slightly. Look at that. Wait, hold on. Is this slightly okay? Let's try and measure this in a way. So uh, I'm gonna put my hand, just my finger right here, actually in front of me. I, hope you, I know you guys can't see this, but I'm gonna put my finger right in front of me, and that's where they're pushed out to. Okay, this is where they're pushed out to. First, I think they're pushed out way further in the second picture. So someone moved the books. Okay, I guess we have that. In Lake of Lies are many dead fish. We must find truth, therefore I say guilty, not uh, not guilty verdict. Mind made up, stop global radio transmission to the verdict, fellow, stop. Should we should we press this lady because she's being uh... a... <coughs> Sorry for the sneezing. Uh, should we press this lady because she's saying her mind is made up, like... Should we be like, hey, why? Hold it! I forget if we already pressed her before or not. Uh, sorry, radio transmission? What does that- what do you mean? Are you from the Far East? Stop. Stop, I won't stop. Um, yes, from the Empire of Japan. All communication with Far East na Eastern nations used to take place by mail. Why do mail ste uh, steamers uh, take more than a month to, uh, to complete a journey? The journey. Ah, uh, but now we have the electric telegram, so we can send messages using electric signals. Thousands of miles of cables have been laid along the ocean's bed, connecting the entire world. Thousands of miles of cable? Oh, the ocean bed? It makes my head hurt just thinking about it. My head does hurt right now. You're a well-informed young lady. He. <laughs> yeah, Iris is way better than you. But the cables will soon become a thing of the past. Stop. And just when was the, I, I was starting to catch up? Radio transmission is the future. Stop. Message carried over airwaves from the core corners of the globe. Stop. 
Excitement growing. Stop. Atmosphere electric. Stop. Right. Try not to wear out your fingers. Era of wireless telegraphy. Stop. Driving technological revolution. Stop. And people say inventions like the stereoscope are the height of technology. What utter piffle. I can understand. I can't understand. I really can't. Hmm. There's silly. Oh, there's silly toys. Who's on this jury again? You should not be. You have a, a vested interest in this trial. I love you. You're funny. But still, you should not be on the trial. You were on the last trial. Yeah. So we have to Excuse pursue me. this. Excuse me. Uh, juror number three. Sorry to interrupt you when you're obviously fuming, but. What? Do you perhaps have something to say about juror number five's last remark? As if I couldn't guess. Oh, you bet I do. Say that again. Go on. I dare you. Goodness, are you talking to me? I think you just might be, yes. You think stereoscopes are just toys, do you? Huh? Absolutely, I mean, really. A machine to view photographs in three dimensions? Why not would you not just use your eyes to look at the world around you? It's all three-dimensional. What a great way to appease the man. No, I'm sorry. Stereoscopes are not practical. Uh, no, have no practical use at all. Oh, this guy's gonna fight ya. You just don't know. Pardon? I think you'll find that viewing a photograph through a stereoscope can unlock all sorts of possibilities. I'm obviously gonna have to demonstrate. What sort of possibilities? Well, take a crime scene, for example. If you had a pair of photographs for a crime scene that you could view through a stereoscope, it could reveal all the uh, hidden clues you never even noticed before. What? Have you got any, Reno? Any prints we could look at with a stereoscope? We got the two pictures, yeah. We have the two pictures. How about this print here? So if we go with... This one? Take that! Alright then, juror number three. Are you saying you can do this with any two suitable photographic prints? Of course I can! Very well then. I'd like you to demonstrate. I'd be delighted to. Just give me one more print and I'll amaze you all. So we'll use this one. Take that! Alright, these two prints were both uh, taken within the same camera and in Windy Banks uh, on the night in question. Yes, I see. Tell me, Mr. Um, lawyer. Do you know how stereographic images work? Do you understand the principle? Well, I think so. I did have a lesson only yesterday. Yeah, remember this? The left and right images needed to be the same, only one slight shift in the positions in some objects. Then when your brain merges the two images together inside your head, it notices a shift as if it were depth. It's really cool how they do that as well, by the way. Yes, exactly. It's that small shift between certain objects and two pictures that re that's really important. So what happens if you use two photographs that are exactly the same then? No, no, obviously that wouldn't work at all. Not for seeing the scene three-dimensionally anyway. Oh. Oh? Of course, now I see. Ah, oh, I think the younger girl has discovered the secret. I have, I have. Has she gone cross-eyed? <laughs> I can do that too. Uh, can you uncross? That's because I have a big nose. Uh, can you uncross your eyes before you tell me? Have a look at the ever yeah, because I look at my both sides of my nose. Have a look at these two pictures from Hurley's camera, Runo. Go on. It's clearly the books are like in a different position here. You can see there's a really obviously uh, obvious difference between them. Of course there is. There's two people in the first and no people in the second. Well, yes, you can see that straight away, but now, try looking at the pictures in three dimensions. Alright, I'll give it a go. So to start with, you have to cross your eyes and then try to make the two pictures overlap exactly. Let's see if by crossing my eyes, I can make the quill pens from each picture overlap in the middle. I'll do it now, watch it my own eyes. No, I have a headache, I shouldn't do that. Wait. Well, did you manage to see a property, Bruno? Um, I guess I'll say not really, because I didn't see it. But I know what she's talking about. It's not very good at this. That's the trouble. Oh, don't worry. I'll just have the thing. I happen to bring this with me. A portable stereoscope. 
I know I mentioned this yesterday, but if you had that contraption with you from the outset, you could have saved me starting uh, staring at Mr. Winniebag and Gina like I hate them all the time. And if you remember, I said in reply that it's much more satisfying to be able to see the effect with your own eyes. Anyway, why don't you try using that helpful aid now? Here goes. The books have changed position. Yeah, they're in a different position. Now let's see what we've got. Wait, look at that. What, what's going on with these two pictures? Some of the things on the counter sort of they jump out at you. <laughs> Everyone's looking through them. Yes, yes, yes. That's it, you see. That's the other amazing power stereoscopes. Other amazing power? Is someone going to explain this black magic to me, eh? Why deduce? Do some of the things on the counter seem to jump out at you like that, hmm? I think you'll find that you consider basic principles of the stereoscope. You'll answer your own question. Basic principles of the stereoscope? As I said before, if you try to look at two identical pictures using a stereoscope, it won't work at all. It's the slight shift in the positions of certain objects that let you see the pictures three-dimensional. In other words, even though at first glance it seems the objects on the counter haven't even moved at all between the two pictures, this shows that actually there must have been a slight shift in the positions. Yes, there must have been. Now hold fire there, sir! Got a reasonable grasp on this whole cross-eyed business now, I'd say. But why the devil does this shift between the two prints exist in the first place? Well, what's the answer, fellow? Come on, you're the cross-eyed master. Oh, the cross-eyed master, watch out. Me? I haven't the first idea. You know, Reno, it's quite simple. It, it is? Just think it through step by step. The first photograph was taken at 1 a.m. Then, 30 minutes later, the second photograph was taken. But the position of some items on the counter appears to have shifted slightly in the interim. So that means... That means that sometime in the half hour interval... Someone must have tampered with the things on the counter! Zookas! Someone tampered? New information. Stop. Not mentioned in testimony, Sora. Stop. Yes. We've had to go around in circles a little here, it seems. But I'm starting to see what I should be aiming at in this summation examination now. Ladies and gentlemen, the question now is clear. We know the items on the countertop were moved. But by whom? Are you suggesting you might know? Of course. I can tell you right now who's responsible for the almost imper- Im Im Well, okay. To me, it's one of the one of these boys here, but I don't know which one. So we'll just go- Maybe we'll, we'll lose a life if we get the wrong one. There were the only two other people in there. They were robbing the place. It makes sense. Yeah. Take that! It was the witnesses currently in the stand. The Skowkin Brothers. This does not agree with what brothers said in testimony before. They said they did not even have time to pull Dukes from Lucy Lockett's. My phrase book says Dukes is meaning hands, and Lucy Lockett's is meaning pockets. But is this another lie? Let go of the mouse, dude. I will literally kill you. Is this what you're saying? Yes, I'm afraid so. Oh, hold on a bare minute. You can't be sure that. I quite agree. The accused is a common pick burst, after all. It's perfectly possible that she went through the things on the desk to see what she might steal. I think that's unlikely. Keep, keep Gina's name out your effing mouth! That's a, see, you know what? Since this video was supposed to come out like, like 10 months ago, that meme works now. <laughs> and why exactly? I'm trying to keep people in the time, you know? <laughs> I think even this photograph print, the defendant was pointing the gun at the victim. It would seem 
as if my learned friend indicated that she was coercing Mr. Winniebank to open the storeroom door. In other words, Miss Lestrade's interest lay within the storeroom, not in the main shop. Give her no reason to touch anything on the counter. At all, all of which points to one thing. The Skulkin brothers have omitted a, a key faction in our testimony. But the accuser's pick was coming gutter trash. Why look any further than the wrongdoer here? I think you're just really upset that you've accepted your life. Which you're lucky, that's fine. If you want to accept who you are, that's great. I'm happy for you. But don't ever call her gutter trash again because I will jump over this table right now and see the blonde guy beside you. I'll get him to say really nasty words to you in British. And believe me, the way his accent goes, it won't be nice. It will actually be very mean. If someone called me a fool in, you know, in Irish, it's kind of jovial and nice. If someone says, you big fool, I'm all of a sudden, I'm, so, I'm crying. You won't like this. Because the Skulkin Brothers are thieves, madame. No better, in fact, worse than a pig purse. Now, all of a sudden, the Skulkin Brothers seem alright by me, you know, game. I believe these brothers were looking for something on the victim's counter that night. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, if you cond condemn the defendant on the grounds that she's a pickpocket, would not at least be right and proper to thoroughly scrutinize testimony given against her by two thieves? That's that makes perfect sense, I guess. You know, like if they're also thieving. I, for one, would like to hear more from that shady pair. Oh my. Okay, dude. Can you all see now? I think I find stereoscopes on playthings. You've seen their extraordinary potential firsthand. We'll hardly agree. Stop. Must purchase after all. Stop. Stop. We'll return home via Regent Street. Stop. So she's, she's like, okay, that's actually like, that's a reasonable person. Hey, I thought this thing was not good. I saw it like be good. And I'm like, okay, that's it. I'm changing my mind. Well, it would seem the trial has yet run its course. The ladies and gentlemen of the jury have declared their inclinations via the mighty scales of justice. I hereby call the summation examination to a conclusion with the balance altered to defend its favor. Two lean to guilty, four lean to not guilty. Accordingly, the jury is without consensus. I owe this trial to continue. Yay, well done. Oh, by the way. What? You should hold on to this, Bruno. You never know when it might come in useful. Twice in one trial will be unsure, uh, unusual, surely, but all right. The stereoscope has been entered into the court record. A folded device that allows anybody to enjoy seeing things in three dimensions. Simply by looking through the uh, eyepieces. Oh, I heard my cat outside. Lord Van Zeeks, you will instruct the witness that the court demands additional testimony from them. I'm sure it won't spoil the bouquet to do so, my lord. You're too tall, Van Zeeks, I'll just say it now. I've won myself another chance to probe that pair about their activities on the, uh, that night at least. And I won't stop probing them until I've proven that Gina is innocent. Yo. Okay, and the end of that, the first part of the trial. Um, I'm not sure how many parts are in this trial. I don't really want to know, I suppose, as well. Save your current progress. How'd you know? Of course I will. We'll do it in episode four. Um, okay, so, so far, let's talk about this before we save and move forward. Um, yeah, it's fun to be back. It's really fun to be back in this. Um, I think that, like, you know, not going into details, I think, you know, I was in a different place when I was playing this game, and I just needed to play, like, some game that was more of an action game that was less about the story and more about the pew-pews. That's why I played Metroid at the time. Um... But, like, I'm very happy to be back in this. I'm very, very happy to be back in this. I think that the characters in this game were just, like, second to none in many, uh, you know, visual novel-style games. Um, it, it's... Yeah, like, I totally, like... I think if I look back on the playthrough, when I talk about pacing and stuff like that, I think that I'm still right in some cases, but I think also at the same time that 
I have to also talk about the fact that like I'm playing this different to everyone else. I'm talking constantly. I'm doing the the voice weirdo voices that are not don't take a lot of effort, but at the same time, you know, you're talking for two hours straight. So maybe that also played into the fact that I thought the pacing was a bit bad because like I'm not like a normal thirty minutes that we just did here, twenty six minutes that we did here of this trial would take um any other person maybe half that. Because they're not talking out loud. They're typing, they're pressing the button, read, click. Read, click. Read, click. Well, I'm doing read, 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 out loud, click. So I can totally understand from that perspective when I look back how I also think I can be very wrong with that. You know what I mean? And also like, you know, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Let's just talk about that as well. Order, please. Let us resume proceedings. Witnesses, you will now retake the stand. Oh, the Skulkin brothers? Oh, there he is, Fish and Chips Gregson. I actually love a bit of Fish and Chips. I presume you've heard of the Defense Council's summation examination. Oh, yeah, Governor. Oh, did, Gav. Oh, did. Mr. and Mr. Skulkin. Caught! Blimey! This is going to be hard work. I still love that, lifting up the iron band, like, as, like, him kind of, like, being like, let's go. You know, we can do this. Earlier in the trial, you gave the following testimony about your actions after you entered Windy Banks. Well, it was Bedlam, so it was, uh, it is, weren't it? It was, Nash. It was. Didn't even have time to pull me jukes out for the Lucy Lockets. However, that was a lie. I seem to say something was like, Reno's gay is fucking sexy as hell. <laughs> Reno is a handsome character. I'm sorry for swearing, but holy hell. Like, again, as I said, absence makes the heart grow fonder. I think absence made me, like, you know... Uh, a better man, cause holy <laughs> Caught, blimey! On the night in question, you rifle through the items on the victim's counter. We never done nothing of the sword! How'd you figure that out? Oh no. Yeah, look at the Skullkin Brothers, not on the same page right now. You will now give formal testimony once again. You will tell the court precisely what happened on the night in question, and this time you will tell the truth! Each lie that passes your lips serves to increase the severity of your punishment. And that, gentlemen, may deal a crushing blow to your chances of ever seeing the light of day again. <laughs> a thought worth pondering, perhaps. I'll defend the Skulkin brothers in the trial. Unless they hurt Gina. If they hurt Gina, then no. Then no, I will not do that. Say no more, Gav. We hear ya. We blab, we squeak, we'll preach. The purple suit's really stylish. Illegal entry, the whole truth. Alright, we did knock a few things over, but we went rifling for nothing. It was when we uh, the gunshots, so you made us both jump and all that stuff when flying. Mommy, you uh, so didn't have to uh, give me a fright. We was thinking the shooter had come out the door and get, uh, get to us next. We stuck it, uh, everything in the back. Sorry, that's not his voice at all. <laughs> I'm getting back into it, guys. I'm getting back into it. We stuck everything in the back. We stuck everything in the back. Uh, we stuck everything in the back, and we found out and scarped straight into him, uh, into him in the back, black. We couldn't have shot the prong progress, say. Eh? We never even had a chance, did we? Okay. Can I be honest, because of these weirdos, I never pay attention to what they say. Let's read over everything they said. She omit to the defense's accusations. You did indeed ransack Mr. Winnebank's garden top on the night of question. Uh, not ransack, Governor, no. There's Roy Nash. 
That's right. It's more like we tie it up, yeah. I know, Van Zeeks. <laughs> uh, sorry. By their own admission, these brothers entered the pawnburgery under dubious circumstances. However, they panicked and fled on hearing the gunshot, having first made them uh, having first made the good mess. Good their mess. The way you say it, we already sound like rogues and roughs at all. We don't nash. We don't. Can't make us sound a bit more cutho? It just can't be coincident that these men showed up at the Windy Banks that night. There's more to their testimony than means the eye. I'm sure of it. Okay, let's talk about it. I love that presentation of this. The presentation of this game is absolutely fantastic as well, so let's see. Alright, we did knock a few things over. We weren't rifling through nothing. It was when we heard the gunshot, so you made us both jump and all that stuff went flying. What stuff went flying? Like, are you just talking about the books or everything? Let's see what they think. Because they might get it wrong. So what you're saying is... The sound of the gunshot shocked you so much you knocked all those things off the counter. Well, it shocked us that much, yeah. The big old uh, bag of nerves needs to learn to keep his shade on. Look, it was loud, alright? Blimey. Me dead granny would have woken up with that bang. Big brother here scammed like a blooming baby fell over the counter. He knocked over a load of books, a candlestick, and some skull or not. That got tangled up in the marionette. Walt knocked over a, p a picture frame. Uh, Walt knocked over the scales on the floor. Can't even do the, uh, the voice anymore, guys. His voice is gone. You really master working quietly then. Walt Racket, me granny, would have been stared back into a grave at a clatter like that. So, in short, the gunshot took you by surprise. And then some. Oh, I mean, it was quite as. A oh. Oh, he's very angry. Oh, we get to hear Gregson. Inspector Gregson, do you have something to add? Look, I'll keep saying I don't appreciate being lumped in with these scoundrels. Oh, weren't they saying he was like the third Skulkin brother? <laughs> no, something to add about their testimony. You seem to react just now to what Mr. Skulkin said. Did it make you think of something? It's probably nothing, of course. I wouldn't even bother to mention it, I'd like... Well, the fact is, cases don't get sold if you ignore the little details. How about you just tell us what's on your mind? As you know, we brought these fellows into the yard for questioning last night. And the statement they gave told a slightly different story to what they're saying now. Huh? Oh? Uh, uh, did he? You claimed you heard the victim shout something out before the gunshot. Uh, more you have, more you have. Uh, it does ring a bell now. Uh, you, you mentioned it. Granted, it's only a minor detail, but still. I can't help feel like perhaps you've been a bit sloppy with your testimony, eh, hey, fellas? If I discover the witness's testimony is only any more than sloppy, then it has hither, 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 to be, here, there, th too. Uh, I shall be forced to bring this very harshest punishment to bear against them. Easy, easy. We'll go right this time. That's it, yeah. It's all coming back to me now. Then speak. Supplement your testimony with whatever details you have miraculously returned to your questionable mind, sirs. Um, uh, uh, right you are. Just before the gunshot, we heard a voice yelling out, Give me that gun! What voice? So in fact, you heard the voice and the gunshot almost simultaneously? Uh, we did, Gov. We did. Although, I suppose, if you're being honest, we had a kind of wavering voice before the yell and all. Uh, if you don't want to get shot... Oh, the interaction! Oh, he shot him! Get him! That was really good, boys. Really... Well done. I, the three Skulkin brothers are, like, so talented. A career in acting tragically missed. Yeah, I agree. And where were the voices coming from? Could you tell? 
uh, coast we could from the other side of that door behind the county it was. From the storeroom where the victim was found dead. And the voice you heard, it was that of the victim, Mr. Windybank. On me granny's life, coast it was. I'm... The boldest kids. The cr the crazy... Uh, you know, they're not bold. I don't want to say they're bold. They're lovely kids. But, like, this is something that's crazy, right? That I always find working in a school. Is that, like, the kids I work with, they will say, I swear on my mother's life. I swear on my granny's life. I swear on my brother's life. And when they say that, you know they're telling the truth because that's the one thing they don't do. They don't do. It's crazy. And some people genuinely, like, like swear by that. For me personally, and I, I never call a kid, I never like to call a kid bold because, like, I think, you know, um, there's always something going on in their lives that you have no idea what's happening with their lives. You know, some kids are mean to other kids and all this stuff. That does happen. Like, I'm not discounting your experiences, but my experience, kids usually aren't just bold for being bold's sake. But yeah, uh, like, it's just weird that, like, that comes up like this. On his granny's life, kosher wash. So that would mean... That you both knew Mr. Winningback and the sound of his voice? Eh, uh, so that would mean what? Uh, what does, uh, any ideas? Yes, Council, indeed it would. Nah, nah, we didn't know the geezer. How am I supposed to know it when that bloke and all the fancy clubbers giving us evil eye? If you value your lives, you will ensure your testimony is accurate and true. Oh my god, his life it is! On his granny's life it must be! <laughs> it's a good job his granny's dead. <laughs> to summarize that, immediately after hearing the voice of the victim, you heard the gunshot. Causing you to stumble and upset the items on the counter, scattering them all over the flat shop floor. It makes you sound like we're, uh, like we're clumsy. Don't forget we tied up after that like good little boys anyway, the way I say it. The bloke what owed the place uh, was owning a gun, so I uh, should have just fired instead of yelling at the girl. I mean, he didn't give any uh, fright. We was thinking the shooter would come out the door and get us next. We stuck everything in the back when we all found it and scarped straight into him in the black. So this is our testimonies. Okay, let's read over this again. Okay, so from tree. Okay, here we go. Just for the gunshot, we heard a voice yelling out, "Give me that gun." Oh, it's two. Sorry. The bloke who owned the place was owed the gun, so he should have uh, first just fired and started yelling at the girl. My dude. She's holding the gun. Objection. My dude. You're saying that on the night in question, the victim, Mr. Winniebank, was wielding a gun, is that correct? Hey, shit, Gav. You got the picture? Yes, no, she has, no question. And yet the photographic evidence from the time of the incident clearly shows that Mr. Windybank was not in possession of a firearm of any description. Objection! You surprise me. Does the defense really intend to highlight evidence? That compromises the position of the accused even more? Yeah, she's holding the gun, but like these guys are clearly lying. Their testimony is a load of hoo he. Furthermore, the defense has failed to establish that the photographic print presented was taken a suitably time, short time prior to the victim's death. Your chronology is severely lacking, counsel. You know what else is lacking? Your mother. Yes, right. To what, Nash? To what? The old geezer could have been out to turn the tables on the girl, eh? Hardly like it, likely. No, I'm afraid this won't stand as conclusive evidence. Ugh. Continue with the cross examination, Cardinal. Is there anything like. But, like, they're. See, the thing is, they're still lying about this. Hold on a second. They're still lying about the number three, though. 
Is there anything else we can present here to show that, like, because I like. The bloke who owned the place was holding a gun, so he should have just fired instead of yelling at the girl. I don't. Windy Bank's gone. This is Mr. Windybike's gun. The cylinder is completely empty. Mr. Wang always used this to keep the gun in hand in his shop counter. Yes, but only ever with a single bullet loaded. I understand. That's right. To keep all the pawned articles that were in his car safe. But his one bullet was fired that night, and the poor man lost his life. Was he protecting his shop, I wonder? Trying to keep the articles safe? We have the crime scene photo. This is what, can I be honest, this is why I don't think Gina did this. Because if he's shouting at the girl, put your gun down. Like this looks like she shot him from like behind. And he's not even holding a gun. Should we present this on three? Objection. So you're saying that on the night in question, the victim, Mr. Windybag, was wielding a gun. Is that correct? This is what I'm thinking. He's not even holding a gun. I said, Gov, you got the picture? Oh, yes, no, no question. And yet photographic evidence retained immediately after the incident clearly shows that Mr. Winnebuck is not holding a firearm of any description. Okay, that's part of what I was thinking. I was also thinking that, like, he wouldn't be facing towards her. I did say it, though. I did say it. I'll take that. Are you war? Uh, Gordon Benny, that ain't right. Objection. There can be no question that the victim's revolver was used in the incident. I would remind the court that Mr. Windbag's gun was found at this crime at the scene. Oh, poor Gina. The only was that identified as the murder weapon, but it was found in the accused's hand. The box. The goddamn box. Yeah, that mortal tool will use the victim's own gun to finish him off. Give me that gun. Again, shooting him from the front. He got shot in the back. Kind of thing. Stay exactly where you are, right there. Eh? If the crime scene had taken place as you so colorfully described in your testimony, it would give rise to the undeniable and significant inconsistency in the final moments you just acted out. Goodness, are you sure, counsel? You're intrigued me, my learned friend. But let's see some evidence to support your claim. Where's the proof that demonstrates it? Yeah, you they shot him, he's shooting the in the reenactment, they're shooting him from the front. So we already presented the crime scene photograph. But can we present it again? We can, can't we? Yeah. Because I was thinking the off the offside report would be like, yeah, because it's like. From the back, there we go. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. Take that! Testimony. The witnesses claim to have heard a shout of give me that gun. Followed by the gunshot. Indeed, with the two events happening almost simultaneously, or we've been led to believe. Yes, that's right. Now, if the testimony is true, it will mean that the moment of death, the victim and his attacker would have been facing each other. However, in the autopsy report, it clearly states but the victim died instantly after being shot from behind. <laughs> I love these guys so much. So, as I stated before, there is an undeniable inconsistency in your testimony, Mr. and Mr. Shulkin. Yeah! But, 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 it's the God on his truth! It is nice, it is, when he was shot that night. The shopkeeper had a gun in his hand. We saw with our own bleeding eyes. Did I hear you just now? You actually saw Mr. Winnebank holding a gun? Um. Uh, something like that might slipped out. Ladies and gentlemen, you've all just heard the admission by these two witnesses. That on the night in question, 
they actually saw with their own eyes the victim wielding a gun. Which can only mean that despite their testimony to the contrary, the Skulkin brothers must have encountered the victim in person. Eh. Oh, Nash, uh. I love the way he's able to do this as well. Order, order, order. Winner should explain yourself at once. Right, remain silent. States, no, you don't. In the court, you have to explain yourself, don't you? Well, the thing is, uh, it weren't supposed to, uh... It would seem that my previous warning fell on deaf ears. I made it quite clear that false witness would be the death of you. Uh. I am to understand that you replaced the untruths of your original testimony with renewed lies. Uh, ever so sorry, Governor. Uh, truth is, uh, see, we, uh... Calm, Nash. Cut it out. If you blab now, you know what you'll do to us. He? Who are you talking about? Let's make your position here perfectly clear. You will talk. There is no other option available to you. Uh... Brav, come on, the game's up. Well, we have our guts, uh, you have our guts for uh, guys. In case it hasn't quite sunk in yet, no matter how hard you try to hide it, the truth will come out. Uh... On the line question, it is now apparent that you brothers met face to face with the victim. I demand that you testify again to explain the precise circumstances under which this meeting took place. Um, well... Do we have to? <laughs> yes! On pain of death. I suggest you make yourself fully aware that this is your very last chance to tell the truth. Encounter with the victim. Alright, so we just got inside the gaff. Uh, um, heaved a sigh of relief that the geezer showed his back. Give me that gun, he's bellowed, and then he flew at us like he was possessed. I thought we had it. I know, geezer, the bloke was strong as ox, but he chucked me over the counter. I pulled my gun on him, and then legged it off uh, through the door in the back room. So you pulled your gun on him, and then legged off. This, they're, being, they're being very honest here. We never had nothing to do with killing him. That's what happened, I swear. I might press... Okay, let's look good through it again, that for sure. Because at least we might get, like, because they might get an idea of, like, who might have done it. But, well, yeah. So you're telling me that the moments before the victim was killed in the store room, you, in fact, encountered him in the main part of the shop. Yeah, and it's also very hard to believe. Um, well, yeah, sorry. Well. We find ourselves at an interesting juncture. This changes matter con matters considerably. Yeah, honest, Governor, this time... This time, Nash, this time, we ain't got, got uh, nothing more to hide. Very well, Counsel for the Defence, you may proceed with your cross-examination. Yes, my lord. This is it. The moment we've been waiting for. Alright, so we just got inside the gaff, and Eve decided relief to see the gee when the geezer showed his mug. Okay, let's press this as well to see why the geezer showed like they were, they were relieved. When you say geezer, I presume you mean the victim, the proprietor of the shop, Mr. Windybank? Who oh, else? Sorry, I mean, uh, that's right. We was keeping a close eye on the entrance to the gaff, obviously. But we never thought no one was gonna come out of the back room like that. The back room being the pawnbroker's sto storeroom. Oh yeah, this must have been where we popped up from. Only place you could have been. So it would seem that the victim was already in the store when these brothers entered the premises. Which means Ginny must have been in there at that point as well. That doesn't make sense, does it? If Ginny had threatened Mr. Winnie back in the store with a gunpoint, then why would he have emerged from the same room all alone when the brothers arrived? Oh, I don't know. Did you see the accused at the time? What? Oh, the mole tooler? Couldn't tell you. Now wait, Cobra. We have bigger fish to fry then. I mean, the old geezer just lost it. So, they didn't say- okay, that's- okay, that was a good- yeah, I-, I that was going to press. Give me that gunny bellowed. I think they're telling the truth here. 
Yep. I don't know why they'd lie here. Yeah, exactly. There, there's no reason they'd lie here. But then I want to press this one as well. Like, it just... You know what I mean? They're being very truthful, saying, like, hey, he threw me over the counter. Nothing at all. Nothing, Gav, nothing. Oh, Geezer went and shut himself in the back room, didn't he? Locked it was from the inside. We know it was, because we tried to open it. Well, it's a decent door, that one. Good and strong, one budge an inch. So in the end, the situation remains unchanged. Inside the store and the pawnbroker's there, only had one other person. The sole person who could possibly have shot the victim. The queue is Miss Jingle restrained. Huh. It would appear so. What say you to that, Council? I don't know. Was there anyone else apart from Gina who could have possibly shot at Mr. Windybank? There's no one else there could have been. I'm like I think the I think you always go with the option of like hey there's more I just want to check out the, the but the crime scene photos not gonna help with that but like I just want to check out like a few like the floor plan first of all no okay I mean could you shoot from the like outside if the door was opened or like if you could shoot from here like because now because like, now obviously things have changed we have a different idea like it uh, they might not have been just let's just say there could have been you know, I think it's always good to go with the positive answer first mr. mr. Skulkin a uh, war What's that look for? From the moment you admitted that you'd encountered the victim face to face that night. The course of this trial changed completely. It, it did? What is your point, my learned friend? The question we must answer is, who could have shot Mr. Windybank? And is the belief of the defense that the defendant is not the only possible answer at all? Grab my attention. In that case, let us return to this plan of the premises. Premises. The victim was killed in the storeroom, which was locked from the inside. Those are the facts, so pray, what other possible answer could the question that shot the man could be? Wait, what? Must now provide answers to court in respect to two conundrums. Okay, so we're two, my lord, twice as many chances to be right, maybe? Indeed, namely, from what location did the culprit shoot the victim? And furthermore, where was the victim at the time? Understood, my lord. Are you alright, Runo? I'm not entirely sure, but there's one thing I'm sure about. If I can prove that there's a credible new alternative to what happened, it would change Gina's pro uh, prospects usually. So now, time for some clarity. Show the court in this plan the answers to the questions posed by his lordship. My original idea... If at least someone else could have killed the victim, indicate where the person could have fired the gun. C could they have, like, literally shot, like, yeah, shot through the door? That's the only th way they could have done it. Right? That. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. We're gonna go what we were thinking. The defense believes the culprit could have shot the victim from this location here. And answers to the second question. Assuming the culprit fired for the location indicated, where was the victim at the time? Oh, okay, that's, yeah, just, just inside here. Take that! That's grand, yeah, that's fine. That works. You can shoot through a door. The culprit shot the victim from the outside the storeroom. Continue. I love how he, I love how he actually, like, he gets a little bit intrigued. Mr. Winnebeck died instantly from the bullet wound in his back. Looking at the stain of blood on the storeroom floor, 
It doesn't appear that the body was moved after death, which tells us that he was almost certainly shot while he was in the storeroom. However, the crucial point is where was the shooter when the fatal bullet was fired? So you were adamant that the shot was fired from outside the storeroom? Well, according to the Skulkin Brothers' earlier testimony, I pulled the gun on him and then we legged it through the door in the back room. If Mr. Waymark ran away through the door, we have to assume that the door was open at the time. Okay, he... Yeah, the door was open. Calvin, you're right. Go with your gun. I said the door was open originally, and then I made myself look silly by going, They shot through the door. Oh! And these brothers had the perfect opportunity to shoot the man in the back once he was inside the storeroom. Oh, yeah! Come to think of it, do you remember what the prosecutor said at the start of the trial? <laughs> Moving on to the finals of Scotland Yard's corner. His report states that the bullet entered the body on a rising diagonal trajectory. It means that the victim likely shot by someone's Oh my god! One of the skulky books! One of the skulky bulkies! You do the skulky bulky and you shoot the man in the back. One man shot while he was running as fast as he could to safety. Of course, he would have been leaning forward as he was running away. So even the bullet was fired horizontally, it would still have entered his body on an upward trajectory. Jesus Christ. I was legit just checking if we were still recording here. I got so worried. Uh, so even the bullet was fired horizontally, it would still have entered the body upward. Yeah. So the culprit isn't necessarily someone shorter than Mr. Wayne. Objection! I'm sure my learned friend can have, uh, can't have forgotten. The storeroom door was found closed and locked from the inside. You claim the victim was shot as he fled into the room? Oh no. Oh, I'm going to cry. Did Gina lock the door? Because she was scared? And then she picked up his gun to protect... No. Is that what Gina locked the door because she was scared, then picked up his gun out of his hand so she could protect herself? Oh, Gina was probably terrified. Do you also claim his corpse was dexterous enough to have turned the key in the lock? Uh, but, but, what if someone else locked the door? Yes, there's someone else who could have locked the storeroom door. Is that so? Very well then, counsel. Present your hypothesis to the court. If the scenario just described, the defense's assertion is that the victim was shot from the outside of the storeroom. In which case, who shot and locked the storeroom door from the inside? Take that! That is so sad, and I'm going to freaking murder these Skulky brothers. For even making her feel a tiny bit afraid. Obviously, the person who locked the door was the only other person inside the storeroom at the time. The defendant, Miss Legina Lestrade. Objection! That's absurd. You're suggesting that the accused deliberately engineered the sealed room? For what possible reason? Such actions will only serve to tighten the noose around her neck. I'm inclined to agree, I must say. Well, counsel? I mean, she was trying to protect herself. She was trying to protect herself. That's what was happening. She was trying to protect herself. Half fake notion of no place in my courtroom, counsel. Remember that, please. But of course, Ginny wouldn't have would have locked the door. It almost goes without saying, doesn't it? It it does. Well, if I was Ginny in that situation, I know I would have locked the door. D Iris, if I was in that situation, I would lock the door and barricade it. Someone shooting at uh, someone and someone died in front of me. I'm sorry. Yes, you're one hundred percent right, Iris. I mean, those two burglars had just fired a gun in her direction, hadn't they? Oh, yes, obviously. Iris, you are amazing. I'm just saying this right now, but also, like, I think, you know, I hope you're not just amazing comparably because, like, I can't believe the other guys didn't get this. Like, I'm not I'm not a lawyer and I got this. <laughs> Before the two brothers arrived, Mrs. Strait and the Mr. Winniebank were in the storeroom together. 
Now I don't know what went on between them in that time, but at some point... Mr. Winwang must have heard the intruders breaking into the shop and left the storeroom. Intruders, eh? That's us, bruv. If your theory is correct, that's us, bruv. <laughs> that will leave the accused alone in the store. Yes, it would. Then probably moments later, the victim fled back through the storeroom door, hoping to escape danger. Bang! Hit in the back by a bullet, Mr. Winwang fell onto the floor, where he was just inside the storeroom. Now we have to ask ourselves now what we have to ask ourselves now is what would the defender have done in that moment? Uh, I see where we're going with this. Outside the storeroom was the terrifying killer who had just murdered Mr. Windybank. As soon as that thought struck Mr. Strait, she slammed the door and sh uh, shut it and locked it. In order to save her own life. Exactly! Exactly! Hold it! But I I mean we ain't the ones who've done it! We ain't gov, we ain't you gotta believe us. I mean come on, we'd never shoot no one! <laughs> Blame me on true. I know for a fact that you would, because before my own eyes, you shot Mr. Herlock. Sh uh, they did. They did do that. I forgot. I almost forgot about that. There's only one logical conclusion here, Mr. 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 Skulkin. You brothers have every opportunity to have been true, the true perpetrators of Mr. Winnieback's murder. <laughs> um. Uh, mm. There's it. There it is. There it is. Where does it leave us? I mean to say it was all the pickpocket who I should have known it was those three brothers who they look shady as dense as a forest. That was amazing, Bruno. All the members of the jury seem to be firmly on your side now. I know. First time ever. And probably the last. I'll kill them. Yeah, you do it. I will kill them with this guy. No, you don't have to, Iris. Murder. No, Iris, please. I think you've done it. Sure, they'll have to, get, to give a verdict of not... Here he comes. Here comes logic, man. An admiral effort, my learned friend. What is this now? He's laughing. You find a situation amusing, Lord Zeke's. I myself, the defense argument is most persuasive. I dare say. Such chicanery is the bread and butter of the street performers in your provincial eastern nation. You're from Britain. Your street performers are Ed Sheeran. Go home. But blatantly, blatantly malicious conju conjuring tricks amount to nothing more than an excusable pet fo petite foggery here. What? The hypothesis you put forward so ostensibly, credibly, cannot and will not stand. Because you see, it contains a fatal flaw. A, a fatal flaw? Do you mean to tell me that you're unaware of your logic's failing? I say, Lord Dranzix, might be an idea to explain this ballet conjuring trick, or whatever it is the troops do, uh, is to the troops on the ground, hmm? The fatal flaw of my learned friend's argument is really very simple to understand. Why? Assuming you're not dim-witted to count bullets. The British education system actively doesn't teach history of Ireland. I'm just saying, just, just saying, guys. Why, oh, George, count bullets? Oh dear. He noticed then. Huh? What's everyone talking about? Council! Yes, sir. Tell the court how many bullets were found at the scene of the crime. Um, two. Two bullets. Correct. The first that which hit the victim in the back, ending his life. And the second that which struck the detective, Mr. Herlock Sholmes. Okay. Indeed. The defense presented a picture showing the damage caused by the second bullet area in the proceedings. The bullet which injured Mr. Sholmes appeared to have passed through his body to strike the calendar. Your lordship understanding is correct. Furthermore, we know there are two firearms involved in the incident. The revolver being belonged to the victim of the Winnebank, which had no bullets in it, and the Skulking Brothers revolver. The evidence shows that a single bullet was fired from each gun. Oh! Yes, indeed it does, a single bullet from each! Now then, my learned friend.
you yourself told the court only moments ago that these two brothers shot Mr. Herlock Jones right before your eyes. Yes, I did. Oh my goodness, I think you're fine. Every single bullet was fired from the brothers' gun in Mr. Jones and Means. Windybag not shot by the same gun, stop. Only one bullet, stop. Exactly. Yes, this Nipponese street performer presented an substantially credible argument, however. Again, British street performers are just Ed Sheeran. You got 300 Ed Sheerans on your streets. Hope you're happy. It was never anything more than a, diversion, a diversionary trick with no hope of standing up to scrutiny. By the way, no, I have nothing against Ed Sheeran, by the way. Like, nothing. But I think it is 100% accurate that, like, every street performer now in England tries to copy Ed Sheeran to get noticed. Because <laughs> that's what worked. Ugh. Order, order, order! Ah! My leg! Pray forgive the discovery of flinging the dregs of this hollowed nectar into the public gallery. Raw Van Zeeks. Yeah, arrest this guy, please. But this course needs to open its eyes. The accused. Miss Gina Restrade is no ordinary little girl. Despite her young years, she can regrettably no longer be described as a juvenile. What do you mean? She has a past riddled with criminal conduct. Hold on one second, my friend. Hold on one second. 17, I do not give a damn what anyone says. That's still a baby. I do not care what anyone says. I know that she won't be legally tried as a juvenile, I think, in this court system. But to me, 17 is still so freaking young, man. When I was 17, when I was 17, I committed at least 10,000 crimes. I mean, no, I mean, what I mean to say is that I, I probably could have been capable. You know? No, I never, I never had a run-in with the law. Got searched a few times, but that's like, everyone has that, I think. Everyone, that happens to everyone. Now, the person in the dock is far from a law-abiding citizen. She has a past riddle of criminal conduct. The truth is, the accused broke into the prom burglary on the night in question with the loads of intent. As we can see beyond a doubt in this print which depicts her threatening the victim with a murder weapon. I believe there was a threat. Yeah, to get that. I believe there was all this blood on it. The disc. You want some of this? All for taking whatever it is out of Mr. McGilded's down to the yard. Thank you very much. No, don't. Don't give it to him. It's mine, it is. It's mine. It is hers. I'm sorry, miss. But anything belonging to Mr. McGilded has been taken as evidence now. Yes, that music box disc. McGilded's music box uh, disc. The very day the hateful murder was a windy bank. The accused attempt to make off with this article, which clearly doesn't belong to her. And with none of the subtlety of a pickpocket, I might add. But by brute force, force and brazen impudence. Good gracious. Make no mistake, any sympathy for the accused on the account of her years is misguided and dangerous. There are no depths at which this girl would stop to be, uh, if, if pushed. No crime she would not commit. You are doing a- you are jumping so far right now that the Olympics are calling. My dude. You cannot say that just because she held a gun to someone that she would commit any single crime. And I'm telling you this right, I understand it's not good and you shouldn't do- she shouldn't do what she did. I'm not trying to excuse what she did of holding a gun up to someone and threatening them to get the disc. I'm not saying that. Okay? What I'm saying is, is that you can't, like, that, that can't hold up in court. It can't. Like, and again, from a school perspective, like, you see this sometimes where teachers will say, like, do you, do you think that, do you think she did, do you think she actually stole that thing from the other kid? And it's like, well, you know, before, she did this, so I kind of think that she might have been. It's like, go, no, 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 we cannot just assume. The court forgets that fact at its peril. At its peril, she's Gina. It's Gina, dude. Get those headphones off you right now, girl. I see, I think it will be prudent to take this music box disc into evidence council. As a grim testament to the defendant's character. Uh, Lord Van Zeeks, I am. 
Inspector Gregson? What? Yes, Inspector. We had a meeting yesterday at the yard with the prosecution service and, uh... I think it was agreed that this wouldn't be used as evidence. Huh? What's this all about? What's this all about? Why is Inspector acting strangely? It's the first time he said anything to Van Zeeks at all. I'm unaware of any such meeting. But, but those were the instructions right from the top. The government's bigwigs were insisted. Oh, Van Zeeks, Van Zeeks. Inspector, I am the prosecutor, and I alone determine how Brits present me. Yes! I kind of love it. I love it. I love it. Get him. Your warning is noted. Thank you. Oh. The prosecution wishes to proceed with the submitting this disc as evidence, my lord. Indeed, bailiff. The music box. Okay, so Melodus used to play music in a mechanical music box. On the reverse side note uh, is a note that reads, For McGilded. Prosecution established an accused motive, opportunity, and basis of character. Let's check- okay, let's check it out first of all, because that's one of the things you guys are complaining about. Not complaining about what you were, like, suggesting. I shouldn't say complaining, because... Like, while I think that sometimes it can come across as complaining, sometimes it's just people just being like, Hey, you're gonna get better off if you do it this way. Which I can totally understand. From Gilded. That's the man you defended in court with a couple of- yeah, that died in the fire. Yes, or rather, mistakenly defended. I wonder what his name is doing on the back of this disc. That's a question I'd love to know the answer to myself. Oh, Runa, look. This is blood. Yes, you're right. Just a small smear, but definitely blood. Actually, I feel as though I might have noticed that before. Huh. Then it's my time to shine again. I thought I'd be waiting forever. All right, hold still with that disc, Runo. So we're going to find out what whose blood is right away. Can we get this done quickly, Iris? In a flash. Whose blood is green again? Oh, a lovely bright shade again. Wait, that color. What is it? It's just that green. It, it's not the first time we've seen that color, is it? Four samples of blood. Oh, we have the blood sample. Okay, cool. Let's check it out. So we have thrice thrice formation. We don't know whose it is yet. Oh, it's... Holmes? No, because he would have... I wonder if it is Holmes, then. There's nothing more to add. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy. I wait your informed decisions and rest my case. I don't believe it. I had the jury on my side for once for all of five minutes. Oh dear. It wasn't even for five minutes, Runa. My lord. I wonder if I might say something that it at this point. Proceed, Mr. Forbin. Been stumbling about in, my, in a bit of uh, fog up to now, if truth be told, but all of a sudden... The answer's barely obvious to me and my men. There's only one thing for it. Oh no. Very well. The court will hear from the jury. Ladies and gentlemen, you will pres present your leanings to defend- No, are they doing this? No, don't do this to me. Guilty. 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 Why? Why is it guilty? Guilty. 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 You guys are a big pack of weirdos. <laughs> Judge, Your Honor. I would like to call those weirdos to the stand, please. Weirdos of the jury. What's wrong with you? Judge, make them answer the question, please. We have eliminated the impossible. Whatever remains must be the truth. Oh my god, that doesn't fit here. 
That doesn't fit here. You haven't removed the impos- You haven't removed all impossibilities. You can't just like- You can't just say like, I'm gonna freaking jump out of this window right now. Or- Or my friend jumped out the window. But there's like, a tree- Other doors in the room and you're like, Yeah, he, he definitely didn't jump out this door because there's no fingerprints on this door. That means he couldn't have gone out the front door. You haven't removed every impossibility. You are a terrible lawyer. That's my line. I wrote that for Hurley. You tell him, Iris, kick him. How dare you use it against us? Don't worry, Iris. I don't think we're, on, we're finished yet. There's still more to this case than we realize. There must be, because there's one thing that I'm absolutely certain of. Gina didn't shoot Mr. Windybank. That's beyond any doubt. I know she didn't. Very well. We will proceed with the second summation examination. Second? Ms. Foreman, are you on the other drawers ready? Garadine's squadron is primed and ready for action, sir. I'm, my blood is like boiling. <laughs> I'm not feeling uh, entirely happy about this. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will each explain on what grounds you have now determined the defendant will be guilty. Once a rogue, always a rogue, I say, um, different breed to us law-abiding citizens. Uh, go F yourself, thank you. As only two bullets are found at the scene, I would say the whole case is done and dusted. Uh, go F yourself. Uh, you don't need to say we see the truth here every which way you look at it. It was the pickpocket. Okay, um, is that what's your reason there, juror number three? Oh, you're just an idiot. Okay. Girl, I never imagined that a simple operation would cause me such grief. Get him off the stand right now. The accused attempted a theft on the previous day. I can see I'm in for a busy day ahead. You, you are just as useless as old man over here. I am a ballistics expert. I've seen many shootings. There is nothing I do not know about guns. I'm so upset because they did. They, he did nothing to get this verdict. We'll see the remaining room for doubt. I have to admit, I was rather bowled over by the argument put forward by this chap in black. Can I say something right now? I'm going to get your wife to come up and spill some freaking hot war on you in two seconds. And you're going to hate it. When that fell apart like a house of... Okay, okay, calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down, Calvin. <laughs> I just don't want them hurting Gina. Well, no more. The whole court was turning against you. Yeah, because they're all silly billies. They're all silly, silly, silly billies. It's not fair. I, yeah, Iris, it's not fair that they're stupid, is it? The prosecution's being mean. I agree. I agree. Just because Ginny's done some things she shouldn't have done in the past. Exactly, Iris. That doesn't make her a murderer. Iris, you're, a G you're the only smart one here. And if you believe your testimony, Mr. Uh, freaking uh, Super Mario Galaxy Waterfish thing. Was that Mario Galaxy or was that Mario's? What game was that where you, you knocked the head of the fish? What was that? What was that where the fish had an X on its head? That wasn't Mario Galaxy. What was that? Well, you're that fish. What was that? Was that Skyward Sword? <laughs> He's a Skyward Swordfish. Here's the truth coming out eventually. That's enough preamble. Council proceed with the summation examination. Yes, my lord. I want to say I don't acknowledge any lord. Use the sword and cut down the Skulkin Brothers right now. Least we can do. Once a rogue, always a rogue. I say different breed or laws by the citizens. As only two bows are found the scene, I would say the whole case is done and dusted. I would say, I would, you know what I would say actually? I would say, shut up. You don't need to stare. You be quiet. 
Can you imagine a simple operation would cause you such grief? You need to you need to give a better answer, dude. And juror number five needs to do it too. Would you please stop muttering about things that have nothing to do with this trial, sir? You and juror number five, for sure. Like are like more than anyone have not given a good line here. Well, the thing is, I couldn't really say there's not to deal with this trial, I'll be honest. What? I mean, there's no question that the man was shot, but the bullet has simply vanished from his stomach. What? It's quite inexplicable, don't you think? What? I almost don't want to ask, but this surgery you've been muttering all about the time you were operating on... What was the first name now? Her... It's in the board! That's his blood! His blood is on! That's his blood! <sighs> Yes, good lord. It was that hairlock fellow. What? You're the surgeon that operated on Mr. Sholmes? That's right. Using the very latest anesthesia techniques, I might add. It was a fairly major op, I can tell you that. This is crazy. Let me see. The fellow was brought in not long after midnight, if I remember correctly. They say he'd been shot by some criminal writer, so I opened him up like a shop. But the funny thing is... I went over his insides with a fine tooth comb and couldn't find a bolt anywhere. So I'm afraid I had to throw my hands and just stitch the fellow back up. It's in the shop still. I hate to say it obvious, but... Yes? Sure, yes, because the bullet at the scene is still at the scene of the shooting. The house of the French is correct. So that's his blood. As clearly shows the photographic print. The bullet of the skulking bullet is fired at Mr. Shobes, hit him in the stomach region. Then exit the body lodged in the shop wall where the calendar was hanging by the door. Oh, disconnected, okay. Luckily I always have a charger handy. I think you'll find it's really quite simple if you just consider the problem three-dimensional. Huh? Who did you have, son? Um, well, juror number four is about the best I could do. As soon as I saw the wound to the man's stomach, I flipped him over. Like a pancake? Are you saying that you checked his back? Of course I did. There was a trace of injury, no sign the bullet left the body at all. What? That's the point, the only two logical conclusion was that the bullet was still somewhere in the man's innards. Wait! Wait a second, there's three bullets! The bullet's still in? Holmes? Sholmes? I'm still another wiser even now, how many times do I have to say what? Can someone explain how it happened? Can someone solve the mystery? Just three bullets! It's almost a such a mystery to how this jury was put together. I agree. The mystery where the bullet ended up is infuriating. Where's an expert when you need one? Wait, do we pit him against... Our boy here? Do we go... Will that work? Because he says he's an expert. Will that work? The two statements... No, they don't contradict. Oh, no. I... I oh. <laughs> okay, so it will work. Okay. On that new question, Mr. Sholmes was shot by one of the Skulkin brothers. But since there was no sign of an exit wound in his back, we must assume the bullet didn't pass through him. However, no bullet was found lodged in Mr. Sholmes' body either. Furthermore... A bullet was found lodged in the wall of the shop where Mr. Sholmes was shot. Journal number six. Hello, my name is Villain. Please, Villain! This apparent contradiction in the facts is so clearly troubling at the juror number four. Are you able to explain the mystery? I've seen a very situ similar situation in the motherland. It was night, there was a blizzard. I was running away from the mountain road in freezing cold. Golly. The snow was piling high on both sides of the road. It was very narrow and dangerous. My pursuers had uh, hunting rifles and they were do on dog sleds. Mental note, don't ask too many questions. I was shot from behind and I fell down in the snow. And the situation was very similar to what I heard today from the doctor. They could not find a bullet in my body. And no sign of, how do you say, 
the eggs are wound? Then where did the bullet go? The bullet never hit me. Well, if it never hit you, why did you fall down? The bullet hit a frozen wall of ice very close to my side. What? One small piece, very sharp, broke away from the lump of ice and pierced my body. It made a deep wound that just looks like a bullet wound. So it hit off the calendar and hit him in the dark? Of course, a piece of ice quickly melted inside me. And that is the solution to my mystery disappearing bullet. Wait. That doesn't make sense for us, though. There was no... Like, what could have broken off? The shooting happened in the... Yeah, but like, I, it, ice ain't gonna melt. That's some snowy mountain road in another country. Oh, now he's woken up. Just an idea, but we might not be looking at exactly the same scenario here. Runo, where exactly was Hurdy shot again? Um, well, according to the report, in his stomach, sort of around this area, I think. Well, it's precisely where he always wears a little pouch on his belt. A pouch? Actually, I might have noticed something like that. Yes, a pouch. It's where three glass vials of very dangerous chemicals are you- What? Really? Doctor, where is the pouch Mr. Shones is wearing? The fellow had nothing like that in his person when he arrived at the hospital as far as I remember. If I may. Lord Van Zeeks, while I realize it's forbidden to the prosecution to interject during a summation examination, I should inform the defense that I have the pouch in question in the antechamber of the Bring it in, please. Bring it in right now. As I understand it, when the police arrived on the scene and found Mr. Sholmes injured, they removed the pouch in order to assess the wound. Oh, thank goodness. I thought I was uh, forgetful for a moment. Since then, it has been my sa in my safekeeping with all other evidence relating to the case. I personally vouch for the fact that it has not been touched since the incident occurred. Very well, while extremely unconventional during a summation examination, I must demand the prosecution present the item in question with all speed. Bring forth Herlock Sholmes' pouch- I thought we were going to say bring forth Herlock Sholmes. Hmm, I see. So in this, this is the pouch worn by Mr. Sholmes on the night in question. Look at that. One of the files is broken and the leather around it is scorched black. Almost as if the file exploded. Exploded? So, that night, the bullet from Skulkenborough's gun struck Mr. Shones' pouch. And the glass file exploded and caused the fellow's injury. This bullet did not penetrate the victim, but was deflected into the wall of the shop. A delightfully complex aroma. But it would appear one mystery has been solved at least. There was no bearing on the truth of this case. The bullying and bur burgling brothers shot the detective and the accused shot the pawnbroker. The pertinent facts of this case remain unaltered. But at least the mystery is solved, I can sleep easier tonight. Thank you, young man. Da, thank you very much. Glad I could help. Due to its bearing on the condom solved, uh, just solved, the court will request this scruffy pouch as evidence. So here we go. The pouch Mr. Shum was wearing around his waist at the time of the shooting one of the glass files to smash, and there are scorch marks around it. Um, I guess we should check it out, though. There's a bullet hole. It's really scorched badly just here. Oh, the strap is broken. Look! This must be where the bullet hit. Then, let me see. It's still there. There's three bullets. There's three bullets. Oh my god. What the? Iris, look. Behind where the broken file was. Do you see it? Ah, oh, that's the Skulkin Brothers bullet. What a stroke of luck that it hit this, his pouch. This is an amazing discovery. This means there were three bullets fired at Windy Bags that night. We found exactly what the drawer was talking about. The third bullet. It's time to press the juror again, I think. 
projectile we discovered lodged in Mr. Shone's pouch. It caused one of the files to explode in injuring Mr. Shone. So we press. Who do they want us to press, though? Is it the girl who was saying, hey, there's only two bullets? Is that who you have to talk to? So if we go... No, we got this, we got this, we got this, we got this, we got this. Yeah, it could be a valuable clue and a can for overly. Yes, we got it, Rita's gate, we got it! Let's go! Let's go back to number two, then. It was her who was like, hey, it's on a bullet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do we... Present something to her? No, we can't present until we press. Hold it! It's the number of bullets that has you convinced. Only two bullets are fired, and the two guns that fired have been examined by the police. When the parlor maid asked me how many uh, how many invite for dinner, I always started to count the table set. Well, that's logical, I suppose. Although, yes, sometimes after dining, Crockery does go missing. One or two guests rather like to find China. Does your boy dine with thieves? So I suppose, if there was another bullet somewhere of which we were unaware, I had to reconsider my position. A third bullet somewhere on the scene, could that put- Yes, I can prove it! Oh, that's so good. That is so good. It's so well thought out as well. It's so well thought out. Take that! There you go, my girl. Here it is. We discovered it just now. Yes. On the night in question in Windybank's Palm Brookery, another bullet hold was fired. It. Hold it, hold it, hold it. What is this new trickery, you Nippanese conjurer? Where did you find that bullet? It was lodged inside Mr. Shone's pouch. What? This pouch was moved from around Mr. Shone's waist before he was taken to the hospital. And since then, it has been touched by no one. Do you mean to say, the shot fired by the Skulker Brothers at night? Yes, as your lordship has surmised. It hit this pouch. Oh, this feels so good! But that makes no sense whatsoever. We already know the whereabouts of the bullet fired at Mr. Shone's. That means that someone else's blood, is it? Ah. Two guns from the scene have already been submitted into the court record as evidence. Yes, that of Mr. Winterbag and that belonged to the Skulker Brothers. An examination of both guns revealed that only a single bullet had been fired from each. Yes, there's a third gun! But, but that must mean... That's right. We know, we now know that on the night in question, three bullets were fired. However, only two bullets were fired from the guns recovered from the crime scene. Until that incontrovertible incon inconsistency is somehow explained, we cannot and must not pass judgment. While the submission and examination remains incomplete, the court has been presented with new facts. Facts that would appear to shake the very foundations upon which this case the defendant has been built. Yeah, it changes everything. It changes everything. As is my prerogative of this situation, I hereby temporarily suspend the summation examination. Oh my god! He's saying you guys get back to the freaking case at once! Oh my god! He's saying get back here! Witnesses! Come down! Were you listening to the proceedings while the defense carried out the summation examination? We was, governor! We was! Perhaps we can dispense with the tedious preamble. Simply answer what this one question. A third bullet has been identified at the scene of the crime. What do you make of that? I give it, Gav. I didn't make nothing of nothing. What can I help him? It's one, it's one of yours. Go blimey, go blimey, uh, not a chance. In that case, do you have, did you have an accomplice? There's three of them, there's three brothers. What? Uh, what? Never! The scalping riders work alone, all three of us! It's just the two of us, that's our trademark. How soon we forget poor Sulky. <laughs> Only two bullets from the crime scene originate from the firearms we have in evidence. The third bullet was fired from another gun. Where is it? Oh, that's a head scratcher. Hmm. Counsel for the defense. Yes? I should like to hear your thoughts regarding these new developments. 
the third bullet, and the mysterious missing firearm from whence it came. Thinking back over all the testimony we've heard, and the evidence we've seen, I think I'm starting to form a picture, a picture of what really happened that night. My lord, I think it's clear that what the Sir Bullet tells us about the Skulkin Brothers is that a secret accomplice... The secret accomplice had another gun. It had nothing to do with them. So I don't think it has nothing to do with them. I think that... And here's my idea. Here's what I'm thinking so far. I think this guy was with them. But I don't know if he did it there. I think he hired them or something. Um... I'll go with this. I'll go with that. I think. I think the guy was working with them. On that night in Winnie Wicks the brothers must have been working with a third man. Um. The witnesses are clearly doing their best to cover up the existence of this accomplice. They did talk about that earlier. They were like, earlier on, they were like, we can't we he'll kill us. Objection. An accomplice, you say? Pig's will. Swill. These protracted proceedings have already forced us to endure two summation examinations. Yet in all that time, there has been not one murmur of the third man. If this apparently wraith-like being exists... That's a good saying. The court must be shown hard evidence. Without it, this fantasy will be crushed. There is evidence of another person being there. There is evidence. There is evidence. Wait, where is it? 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 Will it not show it? Do we not have it? Do we not have it? I was gonna say the... We do... Sorry, wrong thing. We do have it. This... And this. That's not... Yeah, yeah. That's not... Holmes's blood. Prosecution demands answer on two accounts. Firstly, proof, evidence, that his accomplice was ever at the scene of the crime. And secondly, the identity of the superior, uh, spurious character. The Skulkins are lying. I know that. But how can I ascertain the identity of the person they're hiding? Well, counsel, am I supposed to prove the existence of an accomplice and reveal the person's identity even in response to this prosecution's demands, my lord? The defense is... Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I believe I can provide all the answers to prosecution demands. So, my Nipponese friend, despite the swimming eyes, you seem to think you have something to say. This promises to be interesting. I have to push forward for now. There's no other option. I need to use every single piece of evidence available to make a difference. In that case, counsel would like to present the evidence without delay. On the night of question, the moment to jump to the edge of the victim. What proof of this? Yeah, let's Take go. That. The evidence is right here in this portfolio. I chose that portfolio again. I keep hitting the mic, I'm so sorry. Do you expect the court to rifle through your papers as itself? Be more specific. Claim one of those blood samples proves to the presence of a third intruder. Well, which one is it? This one, and this one. So, but like I think this, yeah, either or, either or. But maybe the yeah, this is the blood sample that proves it. No, you perplexed me, cause we're looking so pleased with your side. No. Oh, it's the other one. Oh, okay. I thought we could present either or. I was kind of like, man, like, would it not make sense to present this one? Well, I guess it makes, yeah, this one presenting first makes more sense. There appears to be some green paint or shook like around the bullet hole in the middle of the calendar. That's a blood stain, my lord. A blood stain? The green blood, curious even for you. If the courts understand the intruder was some unhuman creature, 
It's something developed by Mr. Herlock Sholmes. What a great detective. New invention. Stop. Not yet appeared in story. Stop. It's this, you see. It doesn't have a name yet, though. The Frogger sprays chemicals that react with the di different elements in people's blood to change its color. Different elements of people's blood. Yes. Everyone's blood is slightly different, you see. Because it's made up of uh, d different elements. So, by seeing what color it changes, you can tell in a flash whose blood it is. Oh, that brings a whole new extra dimension to looking at the blood. Talk about blood in the corner, stop. Every exciting stop. As an example, this one shows the blood of the victim, Mr. Windybank. Ah, uh, it's a striking blue. Yes, so you see the green color of the blood stain of the calendar shows somebody else was shot in the main part of the shop. Now hold on right there, young man. Could this be from an unrelated incident? Couldn't it? Oh, go home. Go home right now, sir. Please. And, and don't come back if that's okay. No, it's not unrelated. The date showing on the calendar is the date on which Mr. Winniebank was killed. By golly. Therefore, we can assume that whoever was shot was shot on the same day. When whose blood is it? Well, the Skulkin Brothers on the stand don't appear to be suffering from any gunshot injuries. Which means it must be the blood of somebody else, the third intruder, in fact. Objection! Whose identity the core is still waiting to hear? You can't delay this any longer, my learned friend. Who's this ledger third intruder? It's this man here! Take that! The man's name is Eggert Benedict. Eggert Benedict? Who on earth are you talking about, Council? He paid a visit to Windybank's pawnbroker on the afternoon before the incident took place. Almost assaulted a young girl. When the accused attempted to deceive the pawnbroker into releasing this article into her possession. No deception. Gina doesn't lie. That's right. The man identified by the defense is Mr. Eggert Benedict. Then attempted to take the article from the defendant by force. Broker. Um, yes sir? That's not his voice at all, is it? I believe this filthy pocket thief has just redeemed an article from you, no? Oh, yes, no more. We see, we've seen this part, I believe. We've seen this part, so we can probably s skip past this part. I'm just being, like, you know, like, we don't need to see a part we've already seen. I remember this clearly as well. Inspector Gregson was there at the time and can attest to what happened. In the end, it was the inspector himself who took the disc. Can you corroborate this account, Inspector? Uh, yes, my lord. That's more or less what happened. And in the interest of being thorough, I asked Mr. Winback for a print uh, showing the fellow. Taken from one of his red-handed recorder uh, gubbinses. Yes, that's him talking to Mr. Winnieback that morning. And you claim this man and his brother's accomplice. Well, Mr. and Mr. Skulkin? Remember, you can't lie. Never seen a geezer before in my life. Oh, my life, Gav, my life, never seen him. Well, somewhat unsurprisingly, appears that witnesses disagree with the assertion. I'm sure your lordship recalls my learned Nipponese friend's actual assertion. Which was that he could that he could prove the identity of the legend accomplished. Yes, and I can. Then show us the evidence. I agree. We must see proof that the clean cut gentleman in the photo was a filthy criminal you say he is. Huh? This is the last piece of evidence. I've had a feeling that something has been missing in this trial from the very start. But now, I'm going to drag it kicking and screaming. I'm trying to think, what could we... Um, okay. What could we, what could we present? Are you ready to present your answer to court and counsel? Yes, my lord. The defense will present the evidence now. Proof that the man in the picture in his photograph print was, in fact, the person struck by the third bullet. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, the, the... This, because it's probably his blood. Take that! Yeah.
As I mentioned before, on the afternoon of the day in question, the defendant attempted deceitfully and admittedly to reclaim this disc from Mr. Windy from Windy Banks. Which is then, which is when the aforementioned Edgar Benedict appeared on the scene, I believe. This man then attempted to purloin the article from the defendant's possession, no? That's correct, my lord. I myself was present at the time. It was flowing that this uh, a minor incident occurred. But of course, uh, here's the dish for you. Yeah, we've seen this part as well. He's all like, give me the disc now. That's my jacket. And the jacket didn't fit him either, by the way. And she ran. He's like, I'm going to chase after her. Or someone should chase after her. Being a music disc, box disc, it has countless small but sharp metal protrusions over its surface. The protrusion caused Mr. Benedict's finger to bleed. And the resulting smear of blood is still visible on the disc now. Goodness, a blood stain, is it? My assistant and I have just analyzed the blood stain here in this very courtroom. Using my trusty frogger gun. Yes, and we added the results to this portfolio. I say, it's green. It's exactly the same color as the blood on the round the calendar. It is indeed. The evidence is conclusive. The man calling himself Mr. Edgar Benedict, who was in Windbanks earlier in the day, is the accomplice who was present, present at the scene of the crime that same night. Get him in here! Call him in! Look at those two brothers now! They're sweating buckets! Yeah, they're idiots! What are you talking about? It's boiling here! One of them shouted up at them and said, Oi! Hey! <laughs> <laughs> you two are sweating buckets! Hey! It's really hot in here! <laughs> Is the opinion of the defense that Mr. Edgar, Edgar Benedict should be summoned to the courtroom to testify? Mm, it would certainly seem that we can ill afford to ignore this gentleman's apparent presence. Objection! This has gone on long enough, this flagrant ignorance of the mechanics of the law. You don't know how the law works at all. If someone was at the crime there earlier, bugging Gina. Herlock Sholmes, you say? Yes, I've heard that name. The protagonist in a series of short stories. For the vulgar classes of god detections of some such. And now you employ chemical substance devised by a fantastical persona in the highest court in the land. Dude, you have not. You gonna need to go home. Get the bus. Go home. He expects us to take you seriously. These samples made of this, uh, by, made by this plaything, are not fit to be called evidence. So the bloodstain turned a shade of green. What of it? Here's you successfully proving that no other blood in the world would turn the same color. Uh, well. And pray, do not even think of suggesting that we should take Mr. Shum's word for it. Ah, you shut up! Is he right? Is Mr. Shum's good? Okay, trial by combat, let's go. I'll take out my sword. Of course, Mr. Shum's invention is going to be recognized by any official body. But what are choices that I have? Hmm. I just remember what Father Christmas over there said before. Father Christmas? About how he was temporarily suspending the summation examination. Huh? In other words... The examination isn't over yet, is it? Good grief. What did you say, young girl? And in summation examination, the decision as to whether the, the trial continues is in the hands of the six jurors, isn't it? So the way I see it, it doesn't matter what a certain other people think of Hurley's invention. At least... Not for now. Oh, Iris, you're the smartest girl in the world! Young lady, you're quite a devious mind. It really just comes down to one thing. Whether these ladies and gentlemen of the jury... ...are convinced by what you said, Runa, and we're actually goddamn listening! Is that about right, would you say? Or did I misunderstand something? Unbelievable. Mr. Schoen's partner. Is a force to be reckoned with. She is. She's great. She's fantastic. Even smarter than Holmes, I think, and directly smarter, I guess. After that shoe piece of evidence. Uh, uh, true, precise uh, of the situation from entirely. Why is it a piece of evidence? On Spectre Source. It must be acknowledged that the previous summation examination has yet to reach its conclusion. It's absurd. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the court now looks to you to your final leadings in this matter. Come on, guys. Be smart about this. 
Till then, save your final decision. Not please. guilty. My Not man. Guilty. My girl. Not guilty. My boy. Guilty. You guilty. stupid fool. Not guilty. How dare you when we helped you with the bullet situation, old man? That's it. I'm hiring kids to skateboard outside your house. Such is the outcome of the summation examination. Objection. My lord, with all due respect, this is an out- It's an outrage! This prosecution that refuses to accept its decision. On what grounds? Yeah, you judge, you get him! If the jurors are persuaded by some half-baked con con concoction devised by a pretender to, uh, to real police work, they are too ignorant to be trusted with the judgment of anyone's guilt. Van Ziegs, for once we agree on one thing. <laughs> I'm sorry, lad, Van Ziegs, but the outcome of the summation examination cannot be ignored. The trial will continue. High five. Judge, high five. Oh, that's the first time he's been like, oh, I'm wounded. Nevertheless, I dress for the occasion. We find ourselves in a rather awkward situation. The defense has very reasonably requested a subpoena of the new witness. But sadly, I fear that will be impossible. What? The name of the gentleman gave himself Egbert Benedict is quite clearly false. He gave a false name. No. Just when I managed to prove the man was there, there that night. Who was that? Please, who spoke? Um, it was me, my lord. If possible, Inspector. Uh, my, ma'am? I wonder if you could show the photographic print to me again? The one with the gentleman is shown? Oh, uh, right. Uh, this one, you mean? Uh, Mr. Benedict? There's no doubt in my mind. June number five, you don't mean to say... You know this man? Yes, I know him. What? No. Good gracious. Order, order! Door number five, how on earth? I'm a communications officer, stop. As you can clearly see, the gentleman in the photograph is, stop. Also, communication service, stop. He works in my office, stop. That is gonna be so useful, juror number five. Very talented operator, in fact. He should be in the communication station now. Stop tapping on the telegraph, stop. Oh my God, you lovely woman. Hmm. I suppose we all imagine the comes will be some sort of hardened criminal. It's been unexpected to find out what he has a respectable job by the day, whatever he gets up to at night. This is a message that the game is trying to speak to you guys. It's trying to speak to you guys in this way. Sherlock Holmes is, a, is the most famous detective in the world, but Mr. Gregson is putting in all the footwork constantly, right? Am I wrong in saying that? Um, don't judge a book by its cover. Gina is a criminal who is has a criminal past. She must have murdered them. This dude who's committing crimes over here is a respectable gentleman that you wouldn't even think twice to look at. It's talking about your prejudices, but not you guys watching, of course, but the people in this jury and in this trial. I suppose that's it. I suppose that's why I felt something was wrong. Is a gentleman in London's communication safe and we should be able to subpoena him within the hour? Lord Van Zeeks, if you please. Yes, my lord. Make the necessary arrangements with all haste. As your lordship bids. The court will recess for one hour. When the new witness arrives, we shall reconvene to hear the gentleman's testimony. Inspector Gregson? Oh, yes, my lord. I should like to hear from you specifically about the events of the pawnbrokery on the day in question. Come to my chambers during the recess. And bring that cute mustache of yours. You touch a hair on Mr. Gregson's head. Judge, in the head cannon I made up for you, that you are a weirdo. This is unprofessional. I will hurt you. Yes, sir, my lord. Very well. Court is adjourned until 1.40 p.m. I got stuff to do at 1.40 p.m. I'm not going to be here. Okay. Is that another end to the... Is that another... Wait, how long have I been recording for? 
Hold on. Oh my god, two- okay, two hours. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed two hour video. Um, I hope you guys are ready to see this end. We're probably gonna finish in the next few days. Um, I don't know how long is left in the trial, but we're here. Um, thank you guys so much for watching this. Thank you guys for coming back to this, if you have come back to this. Um, you are an incredible force of good, and you should know that. All I'm saying about this is that it's actually really fun. I feel like because I'm in a different part of my life, in a different stage in my life, this is really, really enjoyable for me. Thank you so much. I adore you. Uh, I love this. And I guess, like, so far, like, I'm really enjoying the themes of the game. I think the story is getting really good. I think the story is incredible. I actually always, always thought the story was great. As I said, the only thing I had an issue with was the pacing. But even now, looking back, I think the pacing is more because I have to talk so much through it. Um, but yeah. There's no way I wasn't going to finish at least the first uh, part of this game. There was no way.